Okay, so in this question, they're saying that we've got two boxes that have identical masses of 45 kgs, uh, identical masses out of 45 kgs. Both experience a sliding friction of force mu, which is given by 0 0.15. Then what they want us to find is the tension in the, uh, in the tie cord and the acceleration of the boxes. What you have to get here is that when systems are connected like this, and this is said to be massless or frictionless, uh, that is the border between them. What will happen is that the tension on the left side and the tension on the other side will have to be the same. And here it is implied in the sense that this is just T and this is also just T. So I can see that the two tensions are actually the same. But tension will always pull away from an object. So you just want to keep that in mind. Now, how do you work out something like this one? Well, approach this question in parts. Isolate this object and analyze what is happening to it on its own. Then after that, isolate this object and look at it on its own and see what is happening to it. So what they're asking us to find is the tension in the cord, which is T, and the acceleration. Since these two boxes are connected, they will have the same acceleration. And the question is telling us that they are accelerating in this direction according to this arrow. Is it? Experience the sliding frictional force. Uh, that find the tension and accelerate. Okay, they, they, I think they're not really giving us the acceleration here. Uh, this perhaps has to be the frictional force, not the acceleration. Uh, yeah, this arrow has to be for the frictional force. Okay, so let's now perform the, the, the analysis. Consider this box A. If I just isolate that box A and ask myself, what is happening to it? Well, this box is on a surface. The question clearly is out that it experiences tension and they've been given me the coefficient, uh, not, uh, not tension, friction. They've been given me the coefficient of friction there. So for this one, when I want to look at the forces present here, the first force I account for is the tension T. The tension T is dragging this box to the right. So I'll label this as T. Apart from that, because friction is present, I will say friction will be dragging it backwards, more like preventing or hindering it from sliding forward freely. So I will label this as force of friction. Next up, the weight of the box. The weight of the box will obviously be going vertically downwards. So we'll get this one as Mg. Then of course the reaction, this is on a surface, the reaction from the surface onto the object, that normal force, and to be going up. So for this object, you see that you don't really have a lot, a lot of work to do here. We'll just sum the forces. Let's sum the forces in the X and say this is equals to MA. This is the acceleration they are looking for. This M here is the mass of this box A. Since they have the same mass, I'll just take that mass as M and we'll plug in 45 there. There are two forces here. Let's take to the right as positive. You just have to be very careful. Here I'm taking to the right as positive. So when I choose this direction to be positive, when I choose this direction to be positive, even when I come to the box B, I must continue this line. To show that this is my positive line. Don't say that just because this one now seems as if it is going down, so then this has to now be negative. No, 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 no. Because this is a continuous system, these two are connected like this. When I choose to the right as positive, notice that this is due to the right. Even if it was to start going down, you should see that this is due to the right. So this has to still be opposite direction. So this is what makes the work with tension sometimes a little bit complicated. But luckily for us, for our system, it's not even that complex. You guys should be able to see that this is positive. Even whatever will be going in this direction has to be positive. I was just pointing it out to reach it when we reach point, uh, object B. So tension is to the right, positive. Also friction to the left, negative. This is equal to the mass, which is 45 times the acceleration A. Now, what else do we do? In the y-axis, the sum of forces in the y-axis, equals to, again, in the y-axis, it's not going up, it's not going down, so this is equals to zero. 
two forces there, Fn going up, positive, Mg going down, negative, equals to zero. So Fn has to be equals to Mg. Now, they've given us what the coefficient is. And in this case, we want to eliminate what force of friction is. So we can use the coefficient is equals to force of friction over force normal, so that we can see that when I cross multiply here, force of friction will be equals to the coefficient multiplying force normal. So that from here, the coefficient in the equation was given as 0 0.15. So you can get that 0 0.15, bring it here, multiply it by the no force. The no force, we found that it is equals to just mg. So this is multiplying mg. Remember what the m is? The m is 45. So this is 0 0.15 times 45 times g, and g is 98. So let's quickly evaluate that 0 0.15 by 45 by 9.8, and we get 66.15. So this is now T minus 66.15 equals to 45A. This becomes equation one. We now want to go to the second part, the second diagram. We've done everything we can for that first part. We now want to move on and look at that second part for the box labeled B. So let's take this to the far end. This is question seven. Okay, any questions so far as I shift my work to the other side? No questions, sir. All right, great. Okay, so when it comes to the second part, uh, the the box labeled B, you have to now see that this is on an inclined plane, not a level surface. And the angle of inclination at the bottom here is given 30 degrees. So when it comes to analyzing this one, let me move it up so that it's easy for us to see. Again, what I was saying is, even though to the object which was here, tension was pulling it in this direction, to this box labeled B, Tension will be pulling it away like that. So tension will always act away from an object, not towards an object. So tension here will be going in this direction and it will be labeled as T here. Let's give an example of tension in terms of two people who study. If you have one person, a slow learner, and one person, a fast learner, to the slow learner, the fast learner is someone pulling them up. So let's say, uh, this is the fast learner, this is the slow learner. So to the slow learner, you find that this object, tension behaves as if it's pulling the slow learner towards the fast learner. But when it comes to the fast learner, if this is the fast learner, tension will behave as if it's a force that is pulling them downwards, slowing them towards the slow learner. Now this makes you want to consider how you pick your study groups. Not saying you should abandon your friends, they also need help. I was just trying to help you understand tension. Okay, so this object will experience tension as a force pulling it up in that direction. But you have to remember that it will still have the weight. And the weight, as I showed you guys in the previous uh, example, it will have one component that will always act down the inclined plane like that. And this weight, okay, uh, do you remember the, the expression for this one? What would be the expression for this one? Do you remember it? Okay, this one was mg. This was the one which was in the x-axis. So it was mg sine theta. And the one which was perpendicular to the inclined plane 
we saw that this one was mg cos theta. I showed you guys, I think, in the previous example. So these are pieces of the weight, and this is how they will be. And of course, we know to say the last force that will be left here is the normal force, which is Fn. So when we sum forces here, we can sum forces in the x-axis first, because to Ma, there are two forces. Remember, this is in the positive direction, according to our choice uh, from the previous calculation. So we have Mg sine theta minus tension now is equals to Ma, and M is 45. A is what we are looking for. It's the same acceleration as in the previous case. These two are connected, so they have the same acceleration. Oh, there's one more force left here. The question say that both experience friction. So even here, we expect friction of force to be present. And since it is steady downwards, it implies that friction will be opposing that. Friction will also be going backwards in that direction. So in summing the forces here, the ones going in the negative direction, I have tension. I have to also include friction of force. So I'll quickly say minus the friction of force. I hope you guys were able to spot that. Okay. So from here, we can now perform as the substitution of what we know. The mass is 45. G is 9.8. Then this is sine 30. Then minus T minus the force of friction. This is equals to 45 A. We can multiply these, that's 45 by 9.8. Then a half this or divided by, or multiply it by sine 30. We get 220.5 minus T minus this is equals to 45A. But the question here is again for friction here, how do we, how do we handle it? Want to relate it to the coefficient of friction again, but to make this relation, we also need the force normal like before. So again, we go to the y-axis. That's where the force normal will come from. Sum of forces in the y, again, it's not going through the inclined plane, so this is equals to zero. The normal is going up, Fn minus mg, but now we have to use cos theta is equals to zero. Because when you look at this, mg cos theta is going down, Fn is going up. So based on that, we can simplify this. We see that the normal force becomes equals to mg, then cos theta. The mass is 45, g is 9.8, then cos 30. So that if we do the math here, we have 45, 9.8, then we have cos 30. You guys should be going through what I'm doing. I'm doing this a little bit fast, so I can make mistakes sometimes. So this is our normal force. So we can now use the normal force and this expression to find what our frictional force will be. Because the question did tell us what the coefficient was. And the coefficient, if you recall, the coefficient was 0 0.15. And the normal, we have just seen 381.9. So that we can cross multiply to get the frictional force by 0 0.15 we get 57.29 Newtons. And since we now know what the frictional force is, we can now bring it back to this expression and substitute it where we have force of friction. So let me just copy that. And where there's force of friction here, I'll now just put that value. And that is 57.29. Then simplify the like terms. I can even make T the subject here. I'll have 220.5 minus 57.29, then minus 45A is equals to T. I've moved the T to the other side so that it is positive. Then I can simplify this. And we get 163.2 minus 45A is equals to T. So we can take this as equation two. Now we can just work out equation one and equation two as a system of equations. So I'll go to my equation one, 
where was my equation one? The one I did earlier on, which was this, where there is T, I'll just plug in what my T is from equation two. So this is what we had. So where there is T here, I'll put six one six three point two minus four five a. So this has to be minus six six point one five is equals to four five a. The four five a goes the other side. We now get one six three point two minus six six point one five is equal to this is now four five a plus four five a. When I subtract this, I get I get nine seven point zero six is equals to ninety ninety. Divide both sides by ninety. You get your acceleration as one point zero seven eight, or you can write this as one point zero eight meters per second squared. That comes out as your acceleration. And if you know this, you can come back to this expression, equation two. And in equation two, where there is acceleration, or yeah, where there's acceleration, you can plug in the expression for acceleration, and we get one, this point two minus 45, where there's acceleration, you can use that 1.08. We can use the full value from the calculator. And let's see what you get there. So we're going to have, that's 163.2 minus 45 by our answer. And we get 114.67 newtons, or we can say this is 115 newtons. So let's see if this agrees with what we found. We have 1.08 and 115. Does it agree with what we've been given? Let's take the previous one. We had uh, something that didn't agree with what we were given, but are we going to say, oh, we that they are wrong again or what? Guess what? Exactly what we found. 1.078 meters per second squared as the acceleration and 114. 0.68 newtons as the tension. So here, we got exactly what they found. So this is how you work out this question. Okay, any questions? Okay, so yeah, if there are no questions, we can end here. You guys can invite as many friends as you want to we'll continue doing um, these free classes. Everyone is welcome to join us. So let's end here. As soon as you guys are a lot, we're going to start doing free math classes as well.